launch vehicle from the place is composed of two major groups. Uh, one is in charge of the actual operations and implementation of the various procedures which enable to make the launch vehicle uh, ready for flight. And one is acting as a technical authority in charge of verifying the launch vehicle on board parameters and addressing any anomaly that may occur during countdown. Those are the parts that are similar to the Ariane 5 flights, but there's a new bit that's been added for Soyuz, right? Yes, the peculiarity on Soyuz is that these two groups are each divided into two subgroups. The first one being dedicated to European systems, led by Jean-Pierre Baillet on the one hand, by the Ariane uh, program production manager, Denis Smith, on the other hand, and uh, the second one dedicated to the Russian systems, led by Dmitry Baranov and by the Soyuz program production manager, Valery Kapitonov. In the final moments of the final countdown for the second Soyuz flight of French Guiana, you can watch it on the website at iranspace.com. The excitement here has been very high, you can imagine, all week. It's another one of those moments now, all eyes on the computer screens here in Jupiter, all ears at the telephones as we approach liftoff. We should be starting to hear the DDO calling out. There he is, calling out the final operations, and this was one of the umbilicals that were released. Yeah, we just saw the drop-off of the umbilical connector at uh, 2 minutes and 24 seconds prior to lift-off. So it means that there is no longer umbilical connection with the launch vehicle now, and for customers, this means that there is no longer actual monitoring and control of the satellites. However, for the main payloads, customers may still decide, as did Playhide, by the way, to use a limited number of last distant connections through the three-stage vehicle, which will remain until lift-off time and also after in case of aborted launch, for instance. DDO calling out the, the electrical umbilicals on um, the satellites have been released. They drop into a metal basket designed for this purpose of retaining them. I don't know if we saw that or not. But less than two minutes to go. Final countdown leads to the simultaneous ignition on the Soyuz of the central core stage and the boosters, followed 20 seconds later by liftoff. Can you please explain for us the ignition sequence? It's different from Ariane's. It'll give people an idea of what to watch for. 20 engines are lit at once. Yes, uh, the simultaneous ignition of the Soyuz first and second stages means uh, that 20 combustion chambers start to be operated, four on each trap on booster and four on the central core. The first is uh, built up in three steps to enable uh, monitoring of the engine parameters and potentially abort the launch in case an anomaly is detected. The DDO is going to come out the one, minute. the one minute mark. So these steps are the following. Step one is the low thrust level starting at uh, A0 minus 15 seconds. Uh, then at step two, the thrust is increased a little bit to an intermediate level. Uh, this is done at H0 minus 7 seconds. The last checks are performed, and uh, at step three, we have the full thrust, which is reached at H0 and which no, enables you lift off. off. There goes the gantry. We are ready to go. Watch for that. At minus three seconds, the order is given for the third and final phase, full throttle for liftoff. The DDO will call out the final 10 seconds. We'll let you watch and be back once Soyuz has begun her mission. Début de la séquence allumage lanceur. Largage VKM. Allumage lanceur. 1781st mission and her second here. Some beautiful shots coming up through the clouds. It's been raining. It's been raining all week, but the sky's cleared for liftoff tonight, giving us a fine, fine view of things. DDO says all is well on board. 313 tons of liftoff. That's less than half the mass of the Ariane 5, but remember, Soyuz is complimentary. Not a competitor to Ariane 5. Lifting six satellites tonight, a total payload weighing 2.1 tons. Ariane 5 can lift roughly a four or five times that much, but the boosters are the first stage. That's another difference between Soyuz and area. Yeah, the strap-on boosters and the central core burn together in this first phase of flight. Uh, the four strap-on boosters, as you can see, are the four tapered cylinders around the central core. 
each equipped with the RD107A engine burning liquid oxygen and kerosene. The thrust is transferred to the rest of the launch vehicle through ball joints, which are located at the top of the cone-shaped part of the boosters, each being attached to the central core by two rear struts, okay, which right break now. at separation once the predefined velocity has been reached. Tell us uh, something else about the central core. That's also the second stage, right? Yes, and it uses a slightly different engine, the RD108A, but it also burns liquid oxygen and kerosene, and it is reinforced on its upper curve at the interface with the strap yeah, boosters the to carry the loads right by the latter. And the DDO just announced that the boosters was, uh, were properly uh, separated. This is what uh, happens up there. I think you saw that on the screen there. 47 uh, <clears throat> meters of altitude, roughly. Can you give us an explanation of the curve on the upper left hand of the screen? Yeah, the, uh, actually the top left is uh, velocity versus uh, distance on ground. And the bottom left uh, provides you with the sight angle, indicating uh, the direction followed by the vehicle in degrees, the altitude in kilometer, and the velocity in kilometers per second. So our altitude now 77 and climbing our speed to two kilometers per second. We're coming up to the next milestone jettison of the fairing. The fairing consists of two half shells, which should provide protection for the payloads during liftoff, like your N5. Weighs 1,700 kilos, measures four by 11, the DDO says everything is fine. I'm on board. Yes, the fairing is the ST launch fairing tonight, by opposition to the S small fairing, Project which is right. to be the baseline for the first Soyuz frigate flights in Baikonur. It was uh, decided uh, a few years ago to award CSKB Progress with a contract to develop the ST fairing to normal. accommodate larger payloads, and this was made possible by the introduction of the digital control system on the Soyuz vehicle, as the former analog control system was not able to control Soyuz with touch, large fairing, and subsequent increased aerodynamic forces on the upper part. The fairing built by TSSKB Progress at the Samara Space Center, which also designs and develops the first three stages. The satellite's going to three different orbits tonight, three different yeah, altitudes. There's, well. the, uh, there's, there's the fairing separation. separate. You see how that, the pyrotechnic cords blowing the fairing away, getting rid of the 1,700 kilos that we don't need anymore. That's the reason why we jettison the fairing now? Uh, the reason is that at this altitude, uh, the air density in the atmosphere is very low, and therefore the aerothermal flux on the launch vehicle is considered low enough to remove the fairing, which was initially used to protect the satellites against heat and against contamination. Of course, as soon as part of the launch vehicle, uh, any part of the launch vehicle becomes useless, it should be jettisoned. And, uh, and this should be made uh, also knowing that the fall down area is such right that no property damage, no bodily injury will be caused by the debris on Earth. You can see the satellite's uh, top satellite play at exposed and the four releases underneath. Coming up on the separation of the second and third stage, a particularity of the Soyuz, whereas with the Ariane, we separate the lower stage before igniting the upper stage, Soyuz does just the opposite. Third stage is ignited two seconds before separation of the lower stage, the second stage. The lower part of the third stage, called the skirt, is used to channel the flux of this third stage motor ignition down toward the stage below, where it rebounds, which gives an added thrust, assisting separation, and the third stage skirt is then separated 30 seconds later. You should be hearing uh, confirmation. Allumage du bloc I. Very deadly. Block. Separation bloc à bloc I. Bloc I is also another bloc term. Is the third stage. Yes. The third stage. The so the third stage has been de la jupe du bloc I. ignited, and the uh, second stage has been burned out and separated, occurring right on time. Separation with the skirt 30 seconds later comes at a roughly 173 kilometers. That's half a minute she climbs six 